This is Nate Richardson. I will be reading for you a composition I have put together which I call Exaltation Logic Analysis. It is pulling together a lot of what's been said about exaltation and making some conclusions of my own about how a person becomes exalted, how it's possible, what it entails, etc., what its blessings are. This uh, was put together in March of 2016. For another similar document, the Exaltation Theory. Also for another document, citing profits on this, see a document entitled Exaltation. All of this at richardsonstudies.wordpress.com. One, what knowledge rises with you in the resurrection, and those who have gained more knowledge in this life will be so far the advantage in the next life. That's what Dr. Carmen says. It says, what knowledge you get in this life will rise with you in the resurrection, and those who have obtained more will be so much to the advantage in the next life. Okay, remember this as we go. This all calculates into the theory. Two, Jesus learned obedience by the things he suffered. Three, if we are to gain salvation... Now, there's reference for all this. Okay, The DNC is what talks about resurrection, knowledge rising with you, and being the advantage with more. New Testament is what says Jesus learned obedience by the things he suffered. Three, Joseph Smith said, if we were, are to gain salvation, it is by the very same way that Jesus gained it full obedience. 4. In the next life we'll have a lot more learning to do before we reach Godhood, said Joseph Smith. 5. Knowledge and learning apply to more than book knowledge. See point number 2, referring to how Jesus learned obedience by things he suffered. Okay, so some knowledge comes through suffering. 6. Jesus has a perfect, perfect empathy knowing what it is like to go through any given thing which any given person has ever gone through. See the New Testament and other words of the prophets on the atonement. 7. We are to become joint heirs with Christ. New Testament. 8. Christ has received all his Father has. New Testament. So you see, we're, we're becoming like Jesus. Jesus has perfect empathy. Okay, so how are we going to get perfect empathy? Okay, we're not there yet. We need to keep learning. We need to progress in our knowledge. Okay, we need to suffer more. Suffering is the school of the gods. 9. We will receive all Heavenly Father has. Okay. Because of point 7 and 8. About becoming the joint heirs and how Christ has all His Father has. So also the oath of covenant of the priesthood, etc. 9. We will Okay. 10. Heavenly Father has all power, dominion, glory, knowledge, empathy, etc. 11. We'll become gods like Heavenly Father, based on prior points. Twelve, we get help from Jesus in getting salvation, we see the New Testament, but we still must go through the needed, needed things for obtaining godhood, see point three, which is about how Joseph Smith said to gain salvation, you need to do it the same way Jesus did it, which is obedience. So other prophets have said salvation, you know, is different from exaltation. Exaltation has to be earned. Okay, there is truth in this. Okay, we need to go through certain things. Okay, and remember an earlier point: it's not till after death that we'll get all our learning. Okay, we learn things by the things we suffer. The more we learn in this life, the more advantage it will be in the life to come. So the more we suffer in this life, the more advantage will be in the life to come. See, we can't become a God until we've gone through this. We have to go through this. Yes, the grace of Christ turns us into saints. We need that. Absolutely. There is no one that gets to heaven without Jesus the Christ. But guess what? What are you supposed to do with the gift He's given you? You have to make something. And if you don't make something, then you aren't going to make it. Okay. Point 13. We can access grace for salvation, but when it comes to exaltation, we must earn that. Okay, we talked about that. Point 14. We will become like God, knowing all, 
having suffered all, having gone beneath all things, just like Jesus, able to rule over all our creations. And the learning for this needs to happen in this life or the next. The critical criteria for advancement to attain this is suffering. The suffering is what brings the knowledge. Remember, Jesus learned obedience by the things he suffered. Once you have suffered all, not for your sake, but for the sake of others, you will have learned all empathy and become like Heavenly Father. Okay, now, remember, okay, let's just move on. For further explanation of these, which makes these all make better sense, you need to look at the do my document, Exaltation Theory, as well as the Exaltation document. Moving on, point 15. We will see our spirit posterity. Uh, okay, now the earliest doctrines of the Gospel Manual says we will see our spirit posterity go through experiences akin to what we go through at this time, and we will guide them. Obviously, that's saying that we will be acting in the role that God is currently acting in. Just because God gets more children and they become powerful and it just branches out like a tree that never ends growing doesn't give God any less power. Heaven forbid. Now, also remember Joseph Fielding Smith and uh, Brigham Young and others saying, Heavenly Father has a father. See, this is, this is the order of the gods. We are the children of God to become as him. Point 15. We will see our spirit posterity. Okay, read that. Point 16. Children have the capacity to attain what their parents have. Duh. We are the children of God. All of the standard works attest to that. We can become the children of Christ by covenant. All the standard works attest to that. This covenant is valid unless we sin. See Mosiah 4, 5. 4 and 5. Point 17. Here in this life... <coughs> is like getting the high school diploma. It's what we need to focus on before we go on for a college degree. As far as academics, and not that you need to get a college degree to be schooled, etc. I'm not suggesting that. Okay. You can't even enter into a college until you've obtained a high school degree. Okay. So this life, you must pass. You've got to hit the bar. You've got to meet the requirements. Then, after you're in the next life, guess what? Are there going to be more requirements, more bars, more things, more attainments to rise unto? Well, there darn well better be, or else we're not going to inherit the fullness of joy. Okay? The, cu the crown comes with the cup, the bitter cup. Okay? So, why are we procrastinating the suffering? It's got to happen sooner or later. It's not going to be any easier there than it is here. In fact, we've read several prophets teach that it's easier to make progress here than it is there. So, there's no sense in putting it off. Putting off Christianity, putting off service and sacrifice and family and bearing children and all this. Preaching, going out of your way, financial sacrifices, financial providing, sacrifices to financially provide, all these things. Sacrifices to make time to minister to the widows and the, and the poor. Etc. Etc. Okay. So, point eighteen. You say, "I'm not very excited about suffering. I'm not looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to the rest from all cares and sorrows, as promised in the scriptures." I say, "Very well, as you should." But recall, even God weeps. See the Book of Moses relating the uh, Enoch account. Point nineteen. Also, this life has suffering, doesn't it? Yes. But before we came to this stage, we voted to come here, and we shouted for joy at the opportunity. See the book of Job, etc. We recognize that it is the only path to becoming like our Heavenly Father. So, although there are trials ahead, we embrace it. It's like Elder Maxwell says, when your trials increase, your level of joy increases to cope with that. It's a beautiful, divine thing that takes you all the way up to divinity. Okay. So, also I would point out, if we don't get to this later, I'm just going to point it out right now. We're to rest from all care and sorrow after this life, right? Paradise of God, etc. Yes, the inner struggles we've been having. You know, 
uh, of being righteous, the struggles of dealing with wicked people so much, um, all this. Yes, we do rest from all cares and sorrow in the next life. And hallelujah, let's look forward to that and let's dance all the time in looking forward to that. Okay, But this isn't to say that we're just going to get there and kick it. We're just going to get to heaven and chill. No, we're not good enough yet. We don't want to stop there. We want to climb all the way to the top of the ladder. We want the fullness of joy that God has. Okay? Now, I let's make this let's make this point as well, but unless we in case we don't bring it up later and while it's on my mind. What do you need to do to pass your test in this life? You need to take up your cross. You need to do your best. You are a creature, let's say you're creature A. And creature B is equally important but creature A and creature B have different capacities, talents handicaps, etc so creature A and creature B what do they need to do for exaltation? do they need to do the exact same thing? well they need to obey the commands of God but as far as their capacities and what sacrifice looks like for one of them may be different from another so I bring this to the ultimate lesson Jesus the Christ he gave his all. He led a perfect life. Now, us, to be saved, do we have to give our all and live a perfect life? Well, for all intents and purposes, yes. We have to give our all. What is perfect for us? It's doing a dang good job. Okay? Our perfect is doing our best. It's eliminating the faults until there are no more faults. And we don't attain that in this life. We're not as advanced uh we haven't progressed as far as Jesus. We are stones with rough edges that are not yet as polished as Jesus. So that's what Joseph Smith was always talking about. He says, I'm a rough stone rolling down a hill, getting a chip knocked off here and there, and that I want to become a polished you know, qui- uh, weapon in the, in the quiver or shaft of the Lord. So this is the idea. Don't freak out if your life doesn't look exactly like Jesus' life yet, okay, you must do your best. You must repent, okay? You need to become the person, the divine person, the, the Jesus. Jesus is the prototype of all saved beings, okay? Let's move on. This life is the main testing ground. So, this life is the main testing ground. Mortality is the point of no return. This is the final showdown. This is the big leagues. A third of God's spirit children didn't make it this far. That's a third leaving, and it wasn't you that left. Remarkable. Remember what Joseph Smith said. When you climb a ladder, you must begin at the bottom, doing one rung at a time before you can be able to step up to the next rung. Also, why do I say that mortality is the point of no return, the final showdown, the big leagues? Well, because you've got to get your game together right now. This is the game. This is who's going to take it, who's going to win. Because, remember what the prophets have taught. If you reject the gospel in this life, but then you receive it in the spirit world, you drop a kingdom. You can only attain terrestrial under those circumstances. Now, who's to say who had the full opportunity of receiving it, who was preached to, some people didn't get preached to, etc., etc. Some were raised in such a brainwashed, terrible environment by parents and the society they're living in that there's going to be these mercies and these considerations, all this stuff taken up into account in the judgment bar of God. But don't play games with God. Don't try to think of yourself as an exception. You had better accept the gospel and repent of your sins and prepare to meet God because this is it. Okay? If you want exaltation, you want to the celestial kingdom, the eternal family, all this, you, it's time. Right now. Do it before you die because there ain't no guarantees after that. Okay? Moving on. Point 21. After this life, the test is over for this period. Then we go to the next period. After this life, we rest from all care and sorrow, which applies under this mortal life period. So the care and sorrow, which applied to this life, boom, it's over. The prophecies are fulfilled. We rest. 
This is not to say that the next period won't have its labors. Indeed, prophets have said the contrary. Point 22. Remember, Joseph Smith said that there is still much work to do, much knowledge to get in the next life. And remember that the way we get knowledge is by suffering. Point 23. A number, another key to knowledge is... Oh, another key to remember is this. You will never have to do anything you don't want to. You always sign up for it. You'll always be happy to do it. Why does an accomplished writer write another book? Why doesn't why doesn't he know it will be painful? Why does a mother have yet another child? The same reason. Point 24. Upon the thought of enduring suffering, consider that suffering in increments is a viable way toward progression. Being tired after 7 p.m. in this life is a form of suffering, and thus it refines and schools us. It is all part of the program. It is all for the master sculptor, critical though tiny lines carved into the mold of our souls. Point 25. Also remember that you won't do something you aren't able to. For us in this life, we do all we can. It is by the grace we are saved, after all we can do. Second Nephi 25. Did Jesus do all he can do and thus be saved? Yes. The atonement pushed him to his max. And by doing this thing which pleased the Father, he inherited all the Father hath. We likewise will inherit all the Father hath as we do all we can, however small that may be. Point 26. But what then will we attain unto? How will we attain unto Godhead where we can relate to others seeing as Jesus has perfect empathy from performing the atonement, but we don't. So how, can, how are we going to relate to people? We haven't gone through what Jesus has? Well, once we are in heaven by the grace of Christ, it's time to further protect our, pro, perfect ourselves. <sighs> time to become gods. Time to use the new power that we have received for, for passing this life's trials by being true to our capabilities here. Now, I want to make a cautionary note here. This life is the time to prepare to meet God. And we might very well say the time to prepare to become a God. The time to meet God where He is. Okay? The time to become like your Father. The time to grow up. The time to get involved in the big business. To stop being a child and being so dang obsessed with entertainment, pleasure, all this. Obviously, becoming a god is the most pleasurable thing ever. And you'll have, just was recently mentioned here, uh, July, no, August 2016, Henry Eyring saying that we do our part, we're faithful. We'll have family relationships that are more wonderful than we can possibly imagine right now. So, but what we're getting at here, what, what I wish to clarify, is that we don't wait around in this life for the next life to happen. It's not that this life is the test we passed and the next life is the next test. And you know, this is the get it all done right now. Procrastinating is stupid, and we never know what you're going to have a chance to do. Then we are required to get it done right now, and. We've done our best, etc. We'll work out some kinks in the next that we weren't able to hear, perhaps. That seems to be the case. Further knowledge. Um, we do need, you know, Joseph Smith said, press forward, press on, like Paul said, press towards the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. So, the press on toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So, what's he saying? Press forward toward the high calling of God. You're trying to become a God. What is the calling you want? God. That's what capacity you want to serve in. That's what you want your creature to become. That you have this no deviating, this no desire for deviating, this eternal pleasure, this eternal dominion, this you're no longer a shrubby old miserable fellow that can only throw a rock 50 feet. You're now calling worlds into being by the word of your power. Okay. 
so but we do I do want to suggest here that there is work to be done in the next life we do not it seems become quite like God by the time we die no but we sure do work at it there's not a great way of expressing this I suppose but I mean you've got Joseph Smith said of Hiram Smith Hiram illustrated the very charity the very love of Christ so can people attain Christ like characteristics in this life yes they are required to this is life to prepare to meet God Okay. let's move on Point 27, as we pass one level, our strength grows, and so does our burden. Brigham Young said, pray not for lighter loads, but stronger backs. How will you ever get a back strong as God's if you never push against the same weight he has pushed against in order to gain his muscle? It can't be done. Joseph Smith taught that we need to get salvation by the same way Jesus did, by obedience. See, these are laws, of, you know, God uses the laws. He is governed by laws. To be a God is to be a character which obeys a certain set of laws the eternal laws <clears throat> and one of those laws is how to build a muscle which we talked out about just there point 27 okay point 28 to clarify Jesus gets us to heaven it is not by our own merit that we are saved from our sins this is a beautiful point here Jesus saves us from whose sins our sins then once saved we bear the sins of others and thus become like God you see part of being a God is learning aka developing charity how do we learn it by suffering charity by nature is sacrifice so one of my theories that I hold is that you know Lucifer attained high status all that but he fell he wanted the plan of salvation to be Everyone's saved, let's just program it in this way, let's have this communistic design where everyone has to do what's right, and so then they'll all be qualified to live in heaven. But mm -hmm, he didn't want to do any sacrificing for us. Jesus was the one willing to sacrifice for us. So, okay, Jesus saves us. Hallelujah. And now, welcome to the school of the gods. Welcome to the divine endowment which Jesus Christ has poured on you perhaps more like a fire hose on you to where he set you up like the classical tradition uh, story you know he's paid for your piano lessons now become a pianist you know don't just dance around your house because you have a piano actually learn how to play the thing okay become like him okay so Jesus saves us from our sins once they're saved, we bear the burdens of others and thus become like God. Okay. To point 29. Jesus proved his charity by saving us. Thus he is exalted. And we are saved from our sins. Now what? Now, after this life, or after we're born again from Jesus. Now back on point 29. Jesus proved his charity by saving us thus he is exalted and we are saved from our sins now what now after this life or after the time of our being born again etc it's time for us to learn more charity we've learned been learning charity it's time to learn more charity as Joseph Smith said go on on to perfection that is why it's so key that the DNC says Whatever we learn in this life, it rises with us in the resurrection and is so much the advantage to us in the next life. Now, to end, here is this, a quote from Brigham Young. This is in the Teachings of Brigham Young Manual for the references. Of course, you can look at the document. Teachings of Brigham Young, Chapter 38. Quote, every faithful man's labor will continue as long as the labor of Jesus until all things are redeemed that can be redeemed and presented to the Father. There is a great work before us. Close quote. 
that is the end of this article. Thank you for listening. I'm Nate Richardson. See the, if you'd like the text of the majority of what we had discussed here, see richardsonstudies.wordpress.com. This article is entitled Exaltation Logic Analysis by Nate Richardson.